It is a very good afternoon. It is Niall Bowling with you for the next hour or so. I'll just show you this and then you'll know what we're talking about today. No, they're not bike sheds for 335000 although they could be, couldn't they? And this is, uh, in case you haven't seen this picture, actually, I'll, just, I'll throw it up on the screen there in case you haven't seen the picture of the Irish family. Um, yeah, look at that. Look at this. So this is an excerpt from the new SPHE book that has been given to children doing SPHE. SPHE, in case you didn't know, by the way, is all about relationships and sexuality and all that kind of stuff. By the way, which is good for children to learn about relationships in school. But as you can see, look at the Diddley Idol family there on the left hand side. They're the Irish. And of course, that's the cool family on the right hand side. I'll give you more of an explanation because you can't really see the text there, but I'll tell you all about it in a second. But that's what we're going to be discussing today. If you're on Twitter or Facebook, I'm sure you've seen it over the last 24 hours because many senators and TDs are now calling for the book to be withdrawn because of what they call or what some people would refer to as critical race theory. Now, uh, not only that, by the way, in other news, an apparent climb down by the Department of Education authorities, according to Grip Media, the final published version of the Leaving Cert SPHE curriculum no longer includes controversial references to white Irish privilege that were present in an earlier draft of the book that was reported by Ben Scallon, who also says, by the way, the new senior cycle SPHE curriculum, students will be taught that pornography is dehumanizing, degrading, and particularly for women, and that it is an addictive behavior. But the main controversy this week, reported by Gripton Evie Boone, or Ebreen, sorry, is what's been described as critical race theory by many others who say they it's a mockery of Irish culture. Now, I think it's important to give you a lot of the details in relation to this before we speak to Neve. Uh, the student is asked to compare three families, and the Irish family is mocked, whereas the other diverse families seem to be favoured in their detail. To give an example, Neve says, if you love GAA, and have a family business, play Irish music, and holiday in Ireland, might be critical of RTE, and support Irish film making, and maybe keep hens and think potatoes are tasty, you are family A in the SPHE handbook, being used in Irish schools since 2023. And it's very obvious that family A are not just inferior to diverse families, but they are probably bigoted, insular, and small-minded as well. We also like bacon and cabbage, I believe, too. Um, in the book, we are compared to a Muslim family and also another diverse bunch in a family from all corners of the world uh, who Neve says they have smartphones and pizzas and funky square glasses and obviously super mad crack and lovely and gorgeous and kind open-minded and we haven't a bad word to say about them. And uh, They love change and difference and support their kids in whatever life path they choose unlike that old rotten family A who are forcing their poor children to slave away in a mouldy old family business. Most likely the farm is what they're kind of predicting, isn't it? Or what they're kind of portraying, shall I say. There have been calls from senators and TDs to remove the book immediately uh, from the curriculum. The question must be asked today, do our government actually hate everything about our culture and our people so much they would publicly, publicly mock our traditions? And that's the question I'm asking you today, by the way. I want you to get in touch, 85 Because people are saying it online. I, I'm not asking the question. People are just saying it. Do the Irish government hate us that much? Or hate us and our culture? Now, Neve Breen joins me on the line. Neve, good afternoon to you. No, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Neve, you wrote a really long, detailed, interesting piece. I could read the whole lot, but it does make the Irish family. There's the cool family, by the way. They're the, they're the cool ones. They have the, the funky square glasses and the smartphones and eat pizzas. And they're off to all diverse from all corners of the world. One of them kind of looks French. Another one looks Asian. Are they all meant to be part of the same family or something? I don't know. But, but anyway, the yeah. Irish family are your typical Aaron wearing jumper farming hate the, the, or love the late late show and eat bacon, bacon and cabbage and we're made out to be very bad people according to this so what went wrong here and who approved this and what are people saying about it and what are you saying about it so to be honest Niall and I would think a lot of people when they saw this first including a lot of the TDs and senators and teachers and parents I've spoken to since uh, last week they actually thought it couldn't be real they actually you know people said this has to be a joke it has mm -hmm. to be fake there was no way something that is this gratuitously offensive could be in a school book for first years to have to read with their teacher but it, it's real like here's here's the school book mm -hmm. <laughs> the school book is being used in schools all over the country it's uh, uh produced by edco and on on a chapter and the chapter is oddly enough entitled Inclusion and exclusion, all different, all equal. And you wouldn't mind, I think, Niall, the, 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 uh, what it says about family B. Like, great. Some families, you know, have lots of different uh, traditions and cultures and races in the one family. They like to travel, everything like that. That's marvellous. Nobody's any issue with family B. 
And to be honest, I don't think anyone would have any issue with the kind of maybe the overly tree depiction of family A. Like, she has the countries in the GAA. Do you know mm. what I mean? There's nothing wrong and, with and the goes family. And goes to Flag Hill. Yeah, it mentions we go to Flag Hill. I was at the Flag Hill myself a couple of weeks ago. I think like 600,000 people were at it over the 10 days, the organisers were saying. It was amazing. Like, and the Flag, the GAA, and Irish dancing and Irish music, these are kind of showcasing the, the very best and kind of most ancient parts of our traditions. But that's not what the book did. It didn't just say, oh, Irish families are very occupied or love these kind of traditions. It's that we only love them. And in only loving them, we are bigoted. We hate other religions. We won't allow our children to look at Hollywood movies. We're so insular and narrow-minded that we're just the most awful people in the world. Like Carol Nolan and other TDs are saying this is a racist description of Irish families. But here's the worst part. Here's the worst part. Not only is it so offensive to say that, you know, like I said, half the country, maybe more, people who love the GAA, people who have their own small business, by the way, hardworking, decent people, people who love Irish music, speak Irish, whatever, who live in the farm. Like, look at the, as you've seen the photo, even the cow looks like it's disparaging the family. You know, <laughs> these are, 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 <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking so, at the cow here. He, if you look, actually, yeah. you can see it on the, you can see it on the screen there. The cow is even giving them a dirty look. Yeah. The parents, yeah. like, the parents in the description, you'd have to, if you haven't read it, read it. Your, your hackles will rise, right? I've, I've never. And we only eat bacon and cabbage, by the way, it seems. Only eat bacon and cabbage. Like, no one's ever bought a pizza, do you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. Also, I mean, you, you, you might even think that's a funny part of it, but then the parents are ultra controlling. The children are not allowed to hang around with people of other religions in case they're a bad influence. Like this horrible, horrible, ugly, nasty, vicious portrayal of, of Irish and families. Being, and kids are being asked to to compare these two families and say, more or less say, which family would you be would like to be part of? And of course, a child is going to look at the other family and say, well, that looks cooler. I certainly wouldn't want to be part of that because it depicts this Irish family as being such a strict up bringing, which basically doesn't really exist in Irish society anymore, that kind of thing. Yeah, like, see, this is the horrible thing. So the family, the, the kids are, it's actually going to be a bit of weird exercise anyway, right? The book tells the teacher to tell all the children to close their eyes, right? So you've got all these kids in class and they close their eyes, but the teacher reads these descriptions out loud. And people have noticed, for example, in family B, in the diverse family, a lot of indications that they're kind, they're community minded, they fundraise for people in difficulty, they volunteer in war-torn areas. Family A does none of that. Family yeah. A is just obsessed with Irish culture and then mean-spirited and insular and bigoted and nasty and, and horrible and controlling with their children. So the kids have sat there and listened to the, the teacher read out this nonsense, right? Then the kids are asked which family is more inclusive. And this is the actual cruel part of it. They're asked to pick which family they would choose to be part of. So get this now, you're like a 13 year old boy or girl, you're sitting in the classroom, you like the guy, you've just come back from the FLA, right? Maybe you won a medal for playing the pipes or the banjo or something. And the next thing you are being depicted as a horrible, nasty, insular, bigoted person and your entire class is picking, is being asked and primed to mm -hmm. pick other family as being preferable to yours. Now teachers have said to me, this is actually bullying. You, you, you well, we, we, we did, uh, I'm hoping to have her on later on the show, but we did have a school teacher send us a message where we put it up on Twitter today saying that she has to teach this. She said it's actually embarrassing to teach. Yes, and I think teachers should refuse to teach. I've had teachers getting on to me saying, I'm not going to teach this. I'm telling the school I'm not teaching it. What's more, I want the school to stop taking books from this publisher because how did this get past the internal control process? But how, how, but how did it? Because let's be clear about it. I mean, Norma Foley has been under scrutiny by both Ben Scal and Grip Media and many other journalists too over the last year in particular in relation to what is in the SPHG. Everybody's been watching the SPHG because of the way they want to progress the SPHG. And I'll come to the gender ideology in a second. But, you know, you would imagine because it's under a microscope, they would have been a lot more careful about what they put in it. I mean, this one kind of slipped past everybody. Well, you see, here's the thing, like, it's not for me and I can't now, you know, guess as to the motivations of the publisher or the authors or anything like that. But it is so clearly awfully wrong. You know, it should have rang alarm bells everywhere. And I think a huge part of the problem is, of course, parents are really busy. They don't get time to look at every single page of every single book that their kids are bringing home. No, to not at all. Maybe yeah. But I'll tell you something that is interesting. OK, I got the Irish language version of the SPHG book. So can people see that? Am I holding it mm. in the right place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's the same book, Health and Wellbeing. I'm going to get slunch, I'm going to follow on your OSS, OSPS. 
guess mm. what chapter is missing from it? The chapter with the depiction of the Irish family. The chapter with the depiction of the Irish family. Maybe, maybe, and again, you know, you can only kind of guess at this. Maybe the publisher realised a, ch a chapter which depicted Irish-speaking, Irish culture-loving, GAA-loving family would go down like a bar. You know, it would not be accepted in a Grail skull, but they thought it'd get away with it in other schools. Like that distinction, the fact that it wasn't in the Irish language version of, of the SPHE book, I think is really significant. I mean, I, I, I have you contacted the, the publisher to ask them why they left it yeah. out of the Irish language version? And what did they say? What was the re response to that? Or did... Yeah. We haven't had any response to any of our questions, but like it's not just the publishers. Norma Foley needs to answer our questions too, and she needs to answer parents' questions. And like I tell you, I've never received such, and certainly this year, this is the biggest response to any story we've mm -hmm. written this year, because I think people feel, like, you know, like I said, there's barely a person in the country who hasn't listened or partaken in Irish dance and Irish music. Well, see, I, I, like you, I thought it was a joke. I initially, on Saturday morning, I think it was, I saw some people retweeting the images of the book and I went, ah, that's, that's somebody's just mocked that up on Photoshop. That couldn't be real. And then I saw your story. So I retweeted that then. And I think it has over 2,000 likes or something like that because obviously it really caught people's imagination. And I, I, I genuinely thought it was fake. I thought this couldn't be real. And the same went for the gender ideology part of it. And I'm going to come to that in a second as well. Yeah, and a lot of people have huge objections to that, you know, telling young children, you know, they can be whatever they want to be. I mean, this is gender ideology. If they want to believe that outside of school, that's perfectly fine. But I don't think it's a place for school setting for schools to be selling children that. Um, but in saying that, like, everybody thought it was fake. But it is, it's hard to believe it's actually real. It's hard to believe. And it's hard to believe, I think, that we're at a stage in Ireland where... Um, a school book publisher, and then perhaps even some schools and even some teachers can think that it's right to kind of denigrate Irishness like this. Because the, the book isn't necessarily, there's nothing wrong with diversity. Families are free to be as diverse as they want. And one of the horrible things that's implied in family is that if both your parents are Irish, there seems to be something wrong with that. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with that? Like, like, will we ever get this position where we're asking kids in school to compare families and rate families? I thought the whole drift was meant to be against that, but it doesn't seem to matter when it comes to making implications, very dangerous, nasty implications about Irishness and about Irish people. And I saw the, the local story and uh, Dr. Conor Reedy was on Tip FM and he said he thought it was really disturbing. And he said there was subliminal messaging at play, which he said, which equated traditional Irish culture with racism. Mm -hmm. And he is 100% right. That's exactly what's going on here. If you, like, it's the old adage, like, just because I love my wife, I don't hate yours. Or yeah. just because I love my husband, in my case, I don't hate yours. You know, yeah. I love my culture. It doesn't mean I hate yours. But mm. what they implied here to children is if you really, if you're mad about the gang, mad about sessions, and you know, you, you, you love Shandos, and you, you yeah. like the things that are really important up to our identity, there's also a good chance you're a bigot and a nasty man. Yeah, because you, do, because you don't agree with diversity and you don't agree with all those other cool things that the other family have. You do, but you just happen to like Irish culture more. Mm. What? So, so where are we now? I mean, I, I, I know I'm pretty sure at some point during the day, Ben is going to nab the Minister for Education and she will give that gripped look when she sees Ben Scallon in the corner waiting patiently to ask that question. But uh, has there been any response from the Minister whatsoever in Reggie? Because this has been going around for about three or four days now. And, you know, so many people have said, I know Carol Nolan has put in an official complaint about TD Carol Nolan. Uh, uh, Ronan Mullins has as well, and a couple of other senators and TDs. So has she replied or responded or said anything about it at all? She has not. And But I, one thing I do think is interesting now, but first can I say, you know, there's a huge amount of chatter these days, especially on the mainstream media and from politicians about shutting down social media and shutting down alternative voices. And can I just say, like, thank God for Twitter and other social media platforms and yourself and, you know, not to blow our own trumpet, but platforms like Grip, because otherwise all of the upset that parents are feeling and teachers are feeling about this book wouldn't really be heard. Like it's been picked up now by other platforms, but really, I think without, without those avenues for people to be able to say, seen this like you've seen this book this is crazy we wouldn't even be having this well, discussion well I, I mean we could have a deeper conversation about that because I think we're at a very dangerous juncture now when it comes to social media and I predicted back in January last year that X will be gone out of Ireland and the EU by Christmas I, I don't think I'm going to be too far off to be honest with you and I think we're in a very dangerous situation you know when Gripped can't promote themselves as they do on X uh, I promote myself on X and we, a lot of the stuff we get out there makes us more popular on X because people get to see it and I think you know yeah. X is very important 
Uh, and I also believe Facebook is very important. I think all of these methods, you know, for people to get their, their anger out, if it's anger, or their joy out, if it's joy, on social media, I think is really important. And for the government to even suggest... Just, style, just so people can be informed. Mm. Like, otherwise, there would, there would not have been a discussion about this without those avenues where people first raise it and then eventually now it's being picked up elsewhere. I thought it was very interesting that Gary Gannon, who as a TD is probably diametrically opposed on almost everything to Carol Nolan or people like Matthew McGrath or Ronan Mullen, he's also saying it should be withdrawn from schools. He's mm. also saying, you know, it's absurd, it's ridiculous, that's not verbatim, but he's giving those kind of opinions that, and, that it needs to be withdrawn. It must be withdrawn. Like there should not be. There are kids who have started school last week. Nobody should be reading this tripe in school. No teacher should have to do, should have to go through that chapter. And no, no not, not one more well, child. Well, then let's go all the way. Let's tell all the, the parents who are listening today, when your child comes home today, if they're in, I suppose, 13 years of age, in second or first year in school, or first, second year in school, just starts in secondary school, and they have this book. There's the book, all right? And they have that book, or the Irish version of it, if you're in a Gwell school. Well, actually, not the Irish version, because it's not in the <laughs> Irish version. Um, I would remove it from their bag, and I would put a note in as to why you don't want your child using the book. And I think if enough parents do that and send a strong message out, the book will have to be uh, withdrawn. and um, Because it does have to be withdrawn. And it should be withdrawn, not at any cost to the parent, by the way, can I point out. It should be replaced again, and obviously republish. It'll have to be republished uh, without the offending chapter. But just in relation to... okay. Uh, the critical race theory aspect of it, which is what we're talking about there. The other part of it as well is the gender ideology. Do you believe that should be withdrawn from it as well? Now, I know it's, I don't actually have the screenshot of it here at the moment, but you probably have it in your book, uh, which is this idea of a picture of a, a, you know, a young child basically telling them that they can be anything they want and sex is not related to gender. And if you want to be a boy, you can be a boy. If you want to be a girl, you can be a girl, whatever it happens to be. And it goes on about non-binary and queer theory. Uh, do you believe that should be removed from it? See, here's the thing. I think for a lot of parents and I've spoken to teachers who said that they've had more contact from parents um, around that issue, around gender ideology being, part, being taught in schools than they've had really on anything else to do with RSE or SBHE in years. So I think parents are more aware of that and they're talking about that and that's why some of the books I think toned down what was in them about gender ideology from the original drafts. But, and here's the but Nile, they're still including and repeating unscientific nonsense, saying things to kids like, your sex is assigned to you at birth. Your sex is not assigned to you at birth. You're a boy or a girl. Biologically. You know, like, it's not as, biologically. nobody nobody gives you a penis or a vagina. You're just born with it. Well, yeah. Nobody imagines it and then later on you decide for yourself if it's a penis or a vagina. And I think sometimes the cruelest thing about all of this is that there certainly are a very small number of children and then teenagers who, not children, sorry, let me correct myself there. There are certainly a number of teenagers who have genuine gender dysphoria, you know, who genuinely are confused about, about their gender. And what those kids need is uh, the best possible medical support and care. So, and this is something, you know, that the doctors who are involved in this, the responsible doctors who were involved in this have repeatedly said. And instead of that, what we've had is this insane rush towards pretending that nobody, you know, decides their gender identity until they decide it themselves when they're older. This complete denial of the biological reality. That's not helping the small number of children who are genuinely confused either, but it's leading to obviously what we've seen in other countries, this rush to tell kids, well, maybe just have a little bit of confusion. Like Stella O'Malley says that, you know, she often says like, she, she was, when she was young, she was a toy boy. If somebody yeah. had been running these kind of courses in schools at the time, she might have gone off as a teenager and been rushed into surgery. Oh, she, to, she told me that. She said, yeah, she was a tomboy up to the age of 16. She would have went off and got surgery if it had been in 2023. But she said, yeah. thankfully I didn't. And now she embraces her own femininity. In other yeah. words, people people change. They do. And, and we all have changed as teenagers. <laughs> And the teenage years now can be a very confusing time for kids, but there's no need to pretend biology is real and stop like teaching our kids unscientific facts. You're not helping the kids who have genuine confusion either. You're just creating chaos. You know, and I think kids can actually see this. I think kids can actually see if the teacher who is a person of authority, a person I respect, a person I trust, starts telling me nonsense, like I was assigned uh, um, a gender at birth, and you know, that's that being a boy or a girl isn't a real, it's a social construct or something like that. I think it undermines actually 
like teenagers' respect for teachers. When they I, see well, I'm, of, I'm wondering, you know, if they're doing SPHG and then doing biology in the next class, and biology happens to be about the male and female reproductive systems, you know, they're both contradicting each other. Then one is telling you can be what you want, and the other is telling you what you are when you're born. So they kind of contradict each other. It's almost like many years ago with religion and science. Other. They do, and they contradict each other within the SPHE course. Because in one part, you'd be saying, you know, gender is whatever you want it to be, we're all assigned to burn, here's the gender by a person. And in the next chapter, they'd be, say, they'd be saying, women's rights need to be protected. But like, what's mm. a woman? What is a woman if, if there's no such thing? <laughs> Better they don't have that in the SPHE book, what is a woman? I don't think, there's not a politician in Ireland that can, that, that, I was going to say that can't can answer that question, but it's not that they can't answer it, it's because they're afraid to answer it. Uh, anyway, yeah. look, uh, thank you very much indeed, Neve, for drawing attention to it. It was a great piece, and I know there's a follow-up piece on today as well by Ben in relation to pornography as well. There's a lot of pieces in relation to this book. This book is just an absolute and unmitigated disaster, it seems. Uh, thank you for drawing attention to it. Thank you to Grip Media and thank you to you, Neve, as well. We appreciate it. Thanks, Niall. The multi award winning Niall Boylan podcast. Listen live on Facebook, YouTube, and all the usual live stream services. To get in touch, just WhatsApp or text 085 100 2255. The Niall Boylan podcast. They told me to shut up. Available for download from all your usual platforms.